I had an in intro that I was gonna do, and I thought about it last night, and I completely forgot it. It's fine. Aww. We're just gonna change it. Is it, it. the finger Oh, no. I haven't been doing that. Have I? It's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Rats. All right, that's fine. <clears throat> Hey guys, my name is Jasmine and today we're going to be talking about transformation. Before we really get started here, I'm going to tell you what you need. You need a piece of paper, at least one piece of paper. If you want more, you can get more. A Sharpie, a drawing pencil, which is also a graphite pencil, an eraser, crayons, and or color pencils. So we're going to talk about transformation like I said. Transformation in the sense that we're going to be doing it is based around our art here. So we're gonna be talking about transformation between 2D work and 3D work. And 2D work is something that is flat. So it's probably most of what you might do. It can be a drawing on a piece of paper. It can be a painting that is flat on a canvas. And an example of 3D work, which is also a sculptural type of work, is something that you might see in a museum or what you might see outside. It might be a statue that you see outside. It can also be a clock tower. There are some pretty artsy kind of clock towers out there. But for this project here, we're gonna also be talking about um, and thinking about the works of artist Del Jahuli. And he does a lot of things that are both flat and that are also 3D. He does a lot of glass blowing kind of work. So let's get started here. I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna think about just shape. I'm not gonna think too much about detail and how um, things might, small things might look. I'm gonna just do big forms, random shape. So something like this maybe. And then what might be in the middle of it or on it. And I'm going to color this. And you can do several forms, only really did one form here. But when I get done coloring this, I'm going to talk about how it can be transferred into or transformed into a 3D shape. So now it's 2D. I'm going to color it. You don't have to color yours if you don't want to, but I think it makes it that much more fun if you color it. There's an orange. I'm gonna do green. Then I'm gonna switch to my color pencils. I'm gonna do pink. I'm gonna color this space here. I'm actually gonna do a little bit of a gradient <clears throat> because I have an idea that I will talk about in one second. So I do my gradient. I'm gonna color a little bit lighter than what I've been coloring. And then I'm going to go in with another color, which I'm going to do purple. So I'm going to switch to my purple. Then I'm going to start from the other side so I can fade and blend into that a little bit easier to make my gradient.
coloring a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter to fade into that pink. Here's a pretty hand. I'm going to finish up with this purple. my farm. So once again, thinking about transformation and transformative properties, how can this 2D work be changed into a 3D work? I can see this being a big kind of archway or like a bridge. So as an example, here is a person down here. And this is over them. So this would be a big kind of transformation where this 2D work would become something big in 3D and something that you can actually touch and feel its texture and everything. So thinking about how this could become that. Maybe you can use something like, um, if this is not gonna be a public thing, public um, things that are something you can play on and something that is just for looking at, sometimes they're made with different materials Sometimes if um, it's just for looking at, it might not be so stable and sturdy, so it's not as safe to be around. But if I were to make this, and if it were like behind rope or something, something that you can actually not touch because it might be a little bit dangerous, I would maybe use something like wood to make its inside because you need that kind of support. Sometimes when you're making big 3D things, it needs something strong. So just like with Del Chihuly, he uses um, glass, and glass is already tough, it's already hard, but it's still not so safe because it can break. But um, he does flat work that are really colorful, and then he makes really colorful glass work and things that are kind of, that kind of take a bunch of different, very flowy, organic forms, kind of like this, but he has his own style. So. Once again, maybe wood for support to help it stand, and then something like um, a lot of cloth for making its outside here. So it would have basically wood bones and then cloth for skin. And that is an idea of how to take something flat and change it into something big and um, 3D. But if I were to make this a little bit smaller, you could also use clay. Clay is a 3D, um, a 3D work type of medium. So ceramic things, clay, like air dry clay is even a 3D medium. So you could also just make this with your hands. You can also paint it. So that's kind of combining a 3D work in a 2D property like paint. So I'm gonna color my background here because I think this person is just floating in space. So once again, I had my 2D work where I have my 2D work. This is how I kind of just made it. I didn't really think about it too much. You can think about yours if you want, but I just kind of made mine organically. And then thinking about how it can transform into something big or, into tra or to transform into something that is 3D. I put my little person here to be an example of how it can be um, seen with your eye in reality and space around you. So, I'm not going to draw too much grass here, but this is a further example as to how I'm seeing it in person, how I could see it being something that's maybe at a park or something that's at an art gallery, or like a playground, if it's made with something that is sturdy enough to play on and to interact with. Something that is safe enough. This is our grass. 
some of that grass is very tall. It's fine. And this would also be inside, so maybe this is like fake grass, maybe it's in a big building. There are a lot of possibilities that you can do and that you can kind of make and think about whenever you're making your treaty work and thinking about how it can take up actual space. So once again, this is our transformative piece. We talked about transformation and transformative properties, which is taking one thing such as treaty work, which also includes paintings, drawings, charcoal work, things that are flat, <clears throat> excuse me, or that are on canvas. And we also talked about 3D work and transforming that 2D work into 3D work, which 3D work is something that is touchable, something that is physical. So like this is 3D versus our paper, which is flat. And um, we talked about support, which is what we would need to make something that is 3D, something that kind of helps it stand and be strong and sturdy like wood. Metal is also a type of support. And that is it. I hope you guys make many more of these. There are tons of possibilities that you can do and um, make them actual 3D if you want to make a 3D piece of work. And I hope you guys do just that. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.